Alrighty folks, want to welcome you back to another video from Yates Computers Tips and Reviews. Want to start out with mentioning, pause this video, go over, subscribe, hit the bell, get all the reminders of all the postings and everything else that's going up. Number two reminder, make sure you check all the year-end quizzes because those are some very important information you need to know that may be a major benefit to you. This year I'm doing security, best practices type of thing, and gaming and high performance videos. Two different categories for this year. This one is going to be high performance gaming video. I have a lot of content already about this subject on the channel. Broken down into different bits and pieces so you can get more information. But where this video comes in, it's very important for high-end performance machines and gaming machines for you to understand this information. To know the difference is between these type of things. So when you are buying or looking for a certain kind of machine to perform a certain function or a certain task, you know what you're looking for. So thank you all for watching. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, do all the things, share the links, let everybody know I'm out there. Let people know this content's out there. Go through, share video links, let people know. This is very important information. This could save you a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of headaches, and a lot of effort by knowing this information. All right, now that I've gone on long enough for the entry, this is about video cards. Now, this isn't standard, average, business, home user stuff. And this is, again, high-performance gaming video information. Why this is important, if you're running AutoCAD, um, Photoshop, any of those type of high-end graphics other than gaming, you're going to need to know this kind of information. I'm sure everybody knows what the motherboard is. Everybody understands about integrated graphics. This is something that's been changing a lot over the last couple years with the integrated graphics. That means it's on the board itself. Now there are CPUs that have graphics in them. Chips that help to accelerate the graphics along with the motherboard. There are some variables here. This is another factor where I just did a video about memory that might depend on what you really want to do with graphics because you might be going to DDR4 or DDR5. Integrated Graphics and graphics cards usually use the on-board memory. That is also a difference between 32 gigs, 64 gigs. How many slots? A lot of these factors come in play with the integrated graphics because that's what it's on. It's on the motherboard. Higher-end performance... I don't have any of those kind of video cards, but are probably going to be an insert card, an add-on, because those have their own memory, their own CPU, all of their own components on the card. And even if I had a modern day card, it would be really hard to show you all of the components. So. This is another reason why I like the older cards, because you can really see the components, because all the new ones have giant heat sinks, giant fans, and everything over it, so you can't really see what's in there. If you want to see what's in a new card, you're going to have to watch someone's breakdown video where they take it apart, put a water block or something else on there to show you what's in there. All the circuits and NAMs and power relays. This is an older card. 
that is not made anymore. Different kind of slot, a VGA slot. But what's interesting with this is you can actually see where the TV tuner is. You can see where the chipset is with the fan. This is where the chip is that controls most of it that you want to keep control. Cool. Like your CPU. So this is important to know this information, to understand what is on here. Some of them actually need power. Even in those days, they had a power that you plugged in to provide it more power. Ones nowadays need a lot more power. And I will do another video on that coming up, but I will brush on it on this one. When you're looking at a standard computer, you might be looking at a 400 watt power supply. If you're looking at a higher performance system with an integrated high-end graphics card, you're looking at a thousand watt or higher. So these are some of the factors I wanted to bring up when it comes to video cards, when it comes to the high-end graphics, gaming and all of that. I have all the videos on the HDMI display cables, all of that kind of stuff that's out there. Now you have H HDMI or display out over USB-C. Those I don't have too much information on. I have to do my own research to update that. That's going to be something completely different than this. This is a standalone video type of a thing that here's your video card what kind of video card how much memory what kind of memory how fast how many ports how many monitors you're going to have hooked up all of these things come into play are factors when it comes into your video cards because if you're running AutoCAD and you're running it on multiple screens and you're running it there's going to be variables. If you're running multiple screens compared to a single screen, you can do a lot of different things with your video cards. But nowadays, most of them have lots of ports. I don't know if you can find a good enough one on a motherboard. You would have to do research and figure it out to find out, is this motherboard going to supply you enough video for what you're going to do most home users should be okay with a standard motherboard and video card now you can add on a video card and i'm not talking about going out buying the 4090 or something you can buy some of the older generations i mean what i got is the really really old old generations but you know here's an older video card that actually had two fans on it to keep everything cool you can see the chips you can buy an older style you don't have to buy the new modern one you can buy two or three generations back that would probably be okay for most home use a lot of motherboards are getting some fairly decent graphics out of them so you may not need that you might end up going buying a video card couple generations older that might be worse than what's on the motherboard there's been a lot of improvements to that so i wanted to go through and sum that up so people understand what the integrated is compared to the add-on card is and there can be a lot of differences when you get into the integrated that gets into a lot of everything else on the board add-on is the add-on in the old days i don't know if it still does i haven't really seen the feature too much but it used to be able to use the add-on card to support your video card but a lot of that has kind of gone away but now i wanted to sum that up and go through and thank everybody for watching and stay tuned for more videos thank you